My name is Kevin Hancock, Director of Solutions here at Exostar, and thanks for joining me today. Today we're going to talk about Exostar's Policy Pro application and its Are You Ready? CMMC and NIST 800-171 policies. If you'd like to follow along today, Exostar does offer a free trial of our Policy Pro application. You can sign up for that free trial. It just takes a couple minutes at the URL you see there. You got a couple minutes before the actual um, demonstration of Policy Pro starts, because I'm going to first cover a little bit about what's happening with CMMC and kind of where we are in the rulemaking process. But before I dive into that, just want to cover a few housekeeping details. So today's session is scheduled to last 45 minutes to an hour. That does include question and answer. The question and answer will be those that you submitted prior to today's event. If for some reason we do have an outage, you can just wait for a minute and try and refresh the page. You can also use the link in the email you received to try and come back if you, if you do hit, have an outage. This webinar is being recorded. It'll be available on demand after the event at the Exostar Resource Library. That can be found at www.exostar.com forward slash resources anytime after today's event. You also will be receiving a copy of the slide deck and a link to the presentation if you'd like to review this as well. If at any time you'd like to speak with one of our industry experts, if for some reason you need another copy of the slide deck or really with any questions, you can reach us in a couple different ways. You can email us at cmmc-team at exostar.com, or you can use the live chat feature. That can be found at www.exostar.com, our website. And on every page, you'll see a chat feature there, and we'd be more than happy to answer your questions that way as well. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, my name is Kevin Hancock, Director of Solutions here at Exostar. And I'm joined today by David Rowe, one of the Exo, one of our Exostar partners. David, you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Kevin. Hi, everyone. My name is David Rowe. I'm the Business Development Manager here at ISMS, and I'm happy to show the demo today. Thanks, David. So before I turn it over to David, just want to cover kind of where we are in the current rulemaking process. So CMMC, the, the proposed rule, hit the federal registry on December 26 of 2023. That kicked off a public comment period, and that comment period closed as expected on February 26. Now the DOD then takes those public comments, responds to them, revises the rule, et cetera. There are a couple additional steps. They need to enter into the code of federal regulations and that process has been happening so 48 of the code federal of federal re regulations proposed rule for cmmc was put in place on 8 15 of 2024 and just about 10 days ago 32 cfr the final rule for cmmc has cleared its regulatory review as well now, the, the important thing to keep in mind with these two actions is that the timetable for CMMC continues to chug along. What we're, you know, the community of people around CMMC expects CMMC to be in place in early 2025. The reason we can just kind of give you a range is because there's still the, the, there's still some steps in the rulemaking progress or process, sorry but everything is progressing as expected. Now, the key things and, and the key changes to the Department of Defense contracting mechanisms with the implementation of CMMC is that we're moving away from a self-attestation. You know, today when you sign a contract with the Department of Defense or as a sub to somebody that has a contract with the Department of Defense, you agree to follow certain regulations, but those require just a self-attestation that you do these things or a self-assessment of how you're doing these things. 
CMMC moves to a third party assessment model. So if you're an organization that is going to receive, process, or transmit controlled unclassified information, you're going to have to be um, um, assessed to your NIST 800-171 controls once every three years. It also defines some key provisions or key terms of organizations that you may be utilizing to meet some of these requirements. Many organizations use a managed service provider or a managed security service provider to meet some of the NIST 800-171 controls. If you are using those types of organization or if you're outsourcing a portion of your IT infrastructure to a managed service provider, keep in mind that that managed service provider, that's what that that what um, external serv service providers are also typically called in the industry, they need to be at the same CMMC level that you're trying to achieve as an organization. If you're utilizing a cloud service, a SaaS application or something like that to store, process, or transmit controlled unclassified information, that cloud service needs to be a FedRAMP moderate or FedRAMP moderate equivalent level. The, the organization you're utilizing for that service should be able to tell you where they are and, 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 and provide the necessary documentation and information around that for you. Now, just kind of a recap of what CMMC is. It is the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification Program. It's broken up into three levels, right? And it's all wrapped around whether or not you're receiving controlled unclassified information as part of your contract contractual obligations. If you're not, if you're just providing commercial off the shelf products, services, et cetera, if you know no part, you don't receive any controlled unclassified information as part of a contract, you're gonna be level one. Right, and that 63% of the of the defense industrial base falls in this category. That means there are 15 cybersecurity requirements that you're going to have to maintain. You're going to have to do a self assessment every year, and you're going to have to annually affirm that you do those things. The change starts to occur when we start talking about level two. Level two, once again is you're receiving controlled unclassified information from the Department of Defense or a, a prime contractor to the Department of Defense and you've signed a, sub a subcontract agreement with them. They're flowing down those requirements and you may receive CUI or controlled unclassified information as part of that. If you do, you need to ensure that your organization adheres to and has implemented the 110 controls according to NIST 871 revision two. There's a revision three out there. Don't worry about that as far as CMS, CMMC is concerned. CMMC particularly calls out rev two of NIST 800-171. What this means is you're going to have to implement those controls. And once every three years, you're going to have to engage with a third party to come out and assess how you're doing. If you receive CUI and it's it's considered um, controlled unclassified information high, then you're going to be fall under the level three CMMC. What that means is you're going to have you're going to have some additional controls that you need to have in place. You'll need to look not only at SP or I'm sorry NIST 800-171, but you'll also have to look at 172. You'll do also a once every three year assessment, but that assessment will be done by DIBCAC. DIBCAC is the Defense Industrial Bases um, Auditing Group within the DoD. A senior company official is still going to have to yearly affirm that you do those things that you say you do. And if for some reason you don't, you know, when you go to get that third party assessment or when you're completing your own self-assessment, 
if you find that you haven't implemented a particular control, you create what's called a POAM, a plan of action and milestones. That's that is something that is going to fix this thing, right? We haven't implemented this particular control. To do that, we need to do these steps and we need to, and we're going to do those by this particular date. So that's a plan of action and milestones. If you find a control that you haven't implemented, you can open what's called a POAM against that. If you go to assessment and a POAM is found, it can only be against particular controls. And if it's not one of those controls, you're not going to pass the assessment. You still won't pass the assessment if it is one of those, but you'll have 180 days to close that control or implement that control, I should say. Then that same body that you that you contracted with to do the third party assessment would come back, make sure you've done it, and then they would complete your assessment at that time. So in a nutshell, that's what CMMC itself is. Now, when CMMC does take effect, and as I mentioned, we have we expect it to be in early 2025, it's going to be implemented over a phased period. So over 30 months, it's going to get phased in. When it first kicks off for those first six months, it's going to be the same as it is today. It'll be a self-assessment of level one and level two. Phase two is when you'll start to see the the level two certification assessments be required on new contracts. Phase three, you're going to start to see level three be implemented in new contracts, and you'll start to see the level two requirements be put in place for renewals and option periods of existing contracts. And then phase four, after that 30 month period, that's when you really expect full implementation. So just an idea of kind of how it's going to be implemented once it is phased in. All right, but there are things you should be doing today if you've got Department of Defense contracts, and particularly if you've got controlled unclassified information as part of those. If you do, then you should look at your, your, your contracts and see if you've got Defense Federal Acquisition Regulations clauses, that's the DFARS clauses that you see there, 7012, 7019. 7012 says that if I receive controlled unclassified information, I'm going to protect it in accordance with NIST 800-171. And I, you know, and you've affirmed that you do those things. If you've got a, a contract with 7019 clauses in it, it means not only that you implement NIST 800-171 for controlled unclassified information, but you've also got to use NIST 800-171-alpha, the assessment guide, and complete an assessment of how you're doing against those controls. So you score yourself. And your score is going to range from a negative 203 to 110. And the reason it is that range is because each of the NIST 800-171 controls have a different numerical value. If you've implemented a control, you get a one, right? You get one point for that. If you haven't implemented a control, depending on what control it is, you're going to deduct five, three, or one point. When I talked about which poems are 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 allowable, you know, if if one is found, it's those one point controls, and only some of those that you're allowed to have when those assessors come on site. So, but once you've done that self-assessment, again, if you've got that 7019 clause, you need to go into the Supplier Performance Risk System, that's the SPRS system, run by the Department of Defense, and enter that score into the SPRS system. And the Department of Defense uses that SPRS score, and it's not just the score you enter on how you're doing against NIST 800-171, but there's a whole you know, if you will, um, a, a number of different things that go into your overall score as a supplier. And this is one of those values. But when the Department of Defense is looking to let contracts, that's what they, that's one of the things they take into account when they're looking at 
awarding particular contracts. So the better you can do, the more the better your score will be, and the DoD has a has more of a reason to pick you as that particular supplier. So, what we're here to talk about today is XSTAR's Policy Pro, and Policy Pro is is an application that can help you get started down this process, or can take a look at what you've done to date and help you improve what you've done. And the way it does that is it's an application that helps you create those policies and procedures around each of these NIST 800-171 controls. So it provides you templates that you can then customize to fit your business and to fit how you do things and technologies that you have in place. It allows you to customize those to fit you. It then allows you to score those it gives you feedback on those policies and then allows you to obviously rewrite, improve, et cetera, based on a number of different factors. And David will cover these as part as he goes through his demonstration. Now, if you've got existing policies and procedures, absolutely use those, right? You shouldn't start from scratch if you don't have to. You can feed those existing policies and procedures also into the Policy Pro AI engine and get that same feedback on those. This helps you create that overall policy procedure library that you're going to need in place when you start to implement the overall NIST 800-171 program. This is all offered out as a service by Exostar. And obviously as part of that, Exostar maintains the application, improves it over time, will adjust things as as things change as they will, right? We know that that NIST 800-171 R3 is out there and sooner or later the DOD is going to adopt it. When it does, you know, Policy Pro will adopt with it. So to show you how this all works, I'm gonna turn it over to David and let him demonstrate the product. Thank you, Kevin. So as Kevin mentioned, um, we'll be showing you a demo of Exostar's Policy Pro. It is a SaaS-based platform designed to help you and your organization get compliant around the various requirements, including the NIST 800-171 Rev, uh, Rev 2, as well as CMMC version 2.0. Regardless of where your organization is in your cybersecurity journey, maybe you don't have any of those policies that Kevin just mentioned. Um, or maybe your organization is further along and you already have all of your existing policies in place, regardless of, of where you are in that process, you'll be able to utilize the tool in order to uh, ensure you have audit ready documents at the end of this process. We'll start off using our policy builder and this is really the first step uh, in your cybersecurity journey to ensure you have those policies in place for your organization. Uh, in today's demo, we'll be walking through an example of CMMC 2.0 level two. The first time through on the platform, you'll receive this pop up here, and it briefly describes what policies are, as well as some of the other documents you should have as part of your CMMC compliance. For example, it could include documents such as your gap assessment, risk register, your POAM, which is that plan of action and milestones, as well as your SSP, your system security plan. If you don't already have those documents, we do provide some basic templates to those. If you need some further assistance, there is a companion product also uh, by Exostar called Certification Assistant. So definitely check that out. Um, and Kevin will talk about that a little bit after this demo of Policy Pro. Moving on to an access control policy here. This is one of the 14 policies that are required under CMMC level two. And this is everything you're going to want to prepare prior to even getting started with the policies themselves. It'll put you in the best position to ensure that as you're working through the document, you'll have all of the necessary information and material from your organization in order to build out an effective policy. For example, it could include things like gathering your organization's documents, 
uh, processes and procedures related to these various access control topics. Additionally, who you might need to consult with, whether they are internal or external stakeholders. Some examples of those people might be your network administrator, head of IT, or CISO. And then any sort of outside contractor if you do utilize them. So those would be your MSPs, your MSSPs, uh, your ESPs, etc. Once you're ready to get started, you'll click on this Get Ready Started button here, and that's going to take you to our policy template. All of our policy templates are broken out into a couple different sections. We've got the header here, which includes your organization name, the department or departments this policy falls under, the issue date for when you finalized, approved by, and the tracking number. The tracking number can be used in a number of ways. However, most people use it to keep track of the version number of the policy. So as you work on new revisions, new updates to your policies, which you should be doing periodically to ensure that it aligns with your organization's implementations as well as changing uh, standards. The other sections include the purpose, the scope, and the individual practices. Before moving on to the practices, I do want to mention we also have the NFO and NCO control templates available as well. So if you click on the hyperlink right above the practices, you'll be able to access those templates as well. Now the bulk of your work is going to be done here in the practices section. For level two, as Kevin mentioned, there are 110 different practices. We break them out each individually, and there's a couple key pieces of information here before even moving on to the actual template itself. The first part is the practice ID number. In this case, it's 3.1.1. Next to that is going to be the practice ID description, limiting information system access to authorized users. And then underneath that are going to be the guidelines. The guidelines will help you understand exactly what sort of information is typically included within that practice section, as well as kind of in plain English explain exactly what that practice is about. Once you're ready, you'll click on this pencil icon here located to the right hand side, and that's going to bring up my uh, templates for 3.1.1. We can see this policy is going to be about our organization's account creation, work from home, and bring your own device policy. A couple notes as you're working through these templates. One, ensure that you're reading through the entirety of these templates. What's reflected here should uh, reflect what your organization has implemented or what your organization plans to implement in the future based off your policies. Another note to uh, pay particular attention to as you're working through these is there's certain sections that you should uh, definitely customize and we'll walk through an example here together. In the first paragraph, it says all account creations will be submitted by the requesting department manager to the IT support email address for completion using the account request ticketing system or other process. So if you are utilizing a ticketing system to actually uh, to actually handle those account requests and create those accounts. That's what you would fill in whatever system it is you're utilizing. If not, whatever other process it is that you are utilizing in order to complete that particular activity. Another example is here in the second bullet where it says systems administrators and members of the IT support team shall respond and act accordingly to requests within a timely fashion, offering at least a blank hour turnaround for account creation. So again, there, depending on how long it takes your organization to uh, process those requests and create these accounts, you wanna make sure to fill in that section appropriately. Once you've made any changes you wish to make, you'll save that, and that's going to timestamp it as well as who the user was. So you can see exactly which sections have been worked on, which ones still, uh, still haven't been, and if you do have multiple users working on the platform, you can collaborate easily uh, through this process of using our policy building tool and ensuring that you're uh, customizing these policies to fit your organization. Once you've done that, you'll click on this export button here on the bottom, and that's going to do a couple things. It's going to combine all of those sections I mentioned previously. 
So the header, the purpose, the scope, and those individual practices into a single access control document that is then going to be saved to your local hard drive. So you'll have a copy of this access control policy. And it's also an important step prior to moving on to the next feature of the platform. Moving on to policy assessment, this is where you're going to come to as step two if you needed to create those policies in Policy Builder. But as I mentioned previously in the demo, for organizations that already have existing policies in place, you don't have to obviously go through that process of creating, uh, creating policies from scratch. You can simply move on to this policy assessment piece. This allows you to analyze and assess your document, ensuring that it covers everything it needs to cover for CMMC. And as uh, revisions and updates come, for example, NIST uh, 800-171-Web3, once we update the platform for that, you'll be able to assess it against those different standards. Currently, we are uh, assessing it against CMMC version two, level two. So we'll go ahead and upload a document here together. Again, it can be an existing one or it can be one created using our policy building tool. As long as it's in these accepted formats, doc, docx, or PDF. We'll go ahead and submit this document here and pretty quickly we'll receive some different metrics surrounding that document we've uploaded. You want to click on this detailed scorecard link and that's going to bring up this pop up for um, for this document that I've uploaded. So we can see a couple different metrics and the overall assessment for this document is that it appears relevant in size, scope and organizational customization. The overall assessment is comprised of three different metrics, the relevance, the model similarity and the word count. The relevance is how many key terms or phrases are included in your policy. The higher that is, the higher the relevance and therefore overall assessment is going to be. The model similarity compares the policy you've uploaded to our model documents. And we do that for two reasons. One, to ensure it's been appropriately customized to fit your organization. Number two, ensuring that it covers everything uh, a, an access control policy needs to cover. Finally, the word count, uh, while it doesn't have a direct impact on your overall assessment or overall scoring, it does um, show you uh, if it is long enough to give accurate, uh, an accurate assessment on that overall assessment and overall score. So if you see that word count as too short, chances are we don't have enough context uh, in order to accurately assess it. We can talk about um, other things you can use if you feel like the length of your policy uh, is fine. Um, otherwise, you can increase the length if it makes sense to do so until that word count shows um, that it's long enough. In terms of the overall score here, we can see it's a 70.7%. Our overall scoring is not like an academic score, meaning 90% as an A, 80% as a B, et cetera. Our overall scoring is a relevant scoring system, meaning anything above a 50% shows that you have a relevant policy that you've uploaded. Um, and we'll talk a little bit further on in the demo about how you can use the overall score along with the other assessment metrics we provide. So that is the high level overview of the policy, but we also provide some granular feedback as well. And this is what you're going to use to actually uh, see what's missing in your documents and actually improve it uh, in future iterations. And we do that through our key elements not included or Kenny for short. We have two different types of Kenny's. We've got the control Kenny as well as the general policy Kenny terms. My first example here is CUI non-public information. That is that key term or phrase that's missing in my document that I should be looking to include. We also provide the actual practice that it's associated with. So in this case, it's 3.1.22. Underneath that is the discussion. And the discussion comes directly from the standard itself. So the NIST 800-171 slash CMMC uh, practices and controls so that you don't have to flip back and forth uh, between the platform and the standard trying to figure out exactly what 3.1.22 is discussing. The documents for examination are going to be other sorts of documents, records, or materials that your organization can use to help you as you're addressing this control Kenny in your policy. 
For example, certain documents such as your security plan or maybe security awareness training records, anything that can be used to help you address it. Additionally, this list for documents for examination can be used as evidence and artifacts to prove that you are um, indeed implementing that particular practice. Certain control pennies, for example, FIPS here are tied to multiple practices. In this case, it's tied to 3.1.13 as well as 3.1.17. In the case of FIPS or any other control pennies that are tied to multiple controls like that, you want to make sure to address it in each control that is referenced under. The general policy county terms are very similar in the sense that there are also key terms and phrases that are missing in my document. However, you'll notice there's no uh, collapse all, expand all button with that additional information. And the reason for that is these general policy county terms are not tied to, to a specific practice. It is uh, more generic to an access control document. You can also export these results into a PDF as well. So if you wanna save these results or share it with others who aren't on the platform, you can do that as well. One last feature in policy assessment I wanna talk about here is this management approval. We'll go ahead and select this management approved and we'll discuss it further in our dashboard. So the dashboard is where you'll come to to see all your progress and work throughout the platform, whether you're creating policies using our policy building tool or assessing policies and policy assessment, all of that work's going to be reflected here in the dashboard. Additionally, um, if we scroll down here to our latest policy on access control, we can see the green check mark with that management approved as well as who the user was and when they approved it. So one of the requirements um, is that uh, senior management approves of your, your policies. They should be involved um, and ensure that uh, the policies are adopted throughout your organization and ensuring that, um, that you're following the, the proper compliance for those particular policies. One way to keep track is using a tool like Policy Pro to, to keep track of uh, your most recent management approved policy and any previously uh, management approved or outdated policies are also reflected here. So you can keep track of it, whether it's for internal or external audit and tracking purposes, all of that work is documented here. So this can be, this can act as your evidence and artifacts that you are periodically reviewing your policies and that they've been management approved. You'll also see all of those other metrics I mentioned previously in that scorecard including the control kennies, general kennies, and that overall score. So the process will be to uh, whittle down those kennies, um, including it in your documents, ensuring that um, you're, you're adding it to the, the policies appropriately. And then once you've done that, um, as you work on reducing those down, you'll see that overall score trending upwards. I use the overall score to get a quick glance of how my policies are doing over time. Again, as long as it's above a 50% um, and uh, the scoring is trending upwards, you know you're on the right track. It doesn't have to be a certain percent uh, above 50% to be a good document. If it's below 50%, uh, then you know that policy needs a lot of work and it's unlikely to meet the uh, CMMC requirements. And so you'll have quite a bit more work to do if you see that score below 50%. One last feature I wanna talk about is our reference library. This is where you'll come to see uh, additional information, resources, and links across the web. Um, if you're stuck on a particular topic, maybe you're working on a particular control Kenny and you're unsure how to address it within your document, we provide some uh, series of links and resources here, mostly directly from the NISP Institute themselves. So uh, for example, maybe your control Kenny was related to VPNs and you're unsure how to address it within your policy. Instead of trying to Google uh, the appropriate resource, we, we take you directly to that source right there. Lastly, um, I did want to briefly touch up on the fact that uh, level one is available on the platform as well. So if your organization doesn't process, transmit, store, uh, or handle CUI, 
as well as you don't have those DFARS clauses flowed down to your organization, it'll be likely that you'll be going for that level one self-assessment. And if that's the case, uh, you don't have to work on those uh, 14 policies. Select that level one button there and it'll switch it to the six uh, different policy family domains here with the 15 practices. Later on, if your organization decides to bid on contracts with CUI, it's easy to swap to the level two and work on the remaining policies uh, through that process. So hopefully this has been a helpful uh, walkthrough of the platform. Again, policies are an important aspect of your CMFC compliance program. It's really difficult to build policies on your own. Definitely check out uh, a trial of Policy Pro if you haven't already. I'll turn it over to you to uh, turn over to you, Kevin. Thanks uh, for having me and taking a look at the demo. Thanks so much, David. So everybody, let me share back out. All right. So thanks again, David, for your presentation of the demonstration. So just to let everyone know, so Exostar offers a number of solutions around CMMC. And Policy Pro is, is, is absolutely one of those. We also have what we call our CMMC Ready Suite. Um, this includes Policy Pro. It, it includes some, continue, some, some companion applications. One of those is Certification Assistant. Certification Assistant is an application that basically walks you through that NIST 800-171 assessment. It will... It, it's got a place to go through each of those 110 controls, tell, you know, tell the application whether or not you've implemented that particular control. But as many of you may know, it's not enough to say whether or not, you, you know, yes, we do this, right? You've got to create policies, procedures, and implementation statements of how you do those things, right? You can obviously start that with Policy Pro. You can then import those policies that you created in Policy Pro into Certification Assistant to create that policy library. And actually, rather than imp you know bring them into Policy Pro, you would typically link to them, right? Because you're going to version those and change those over time, et cetera. So Certification Assistant is going to walk you through those 110 controls, allow you to you know link to your policy library that you create, allow you to put in the evidence of how you've implemented those controls, because that's something else you need when the assessors come in. It's going to allow you to create recurring tasks if part of those um, controls require uh, a periodic review or periodic training in something, et cetera. So you can link to, again, the evidence that you do those things, create a recurring task that, you, that you've done those things. If you haven't implemented a particular control, it allows you to create a POAM against that and manage that POAM to closure. The output of Certification Assistant is that SPURS, that score that you need to enter into the SPURS system. So it'll score you as you go along. It will also um, create that system security plan that you need. So at the end of the day, what Certification Assistant allows you to do is manage that overall CMMC compliance program, because that's really what this is, right? It isn't a one-time do an assessment and forget it. It's not a one-time build my policies and forget it. All of these things require continual um, revisions, um, up, updates, et cetera. Now, if you're looking for something to store, process, or transmit controlled unclassified information, if you're looking for that secure enclave, Exostar offers a cloud service called Manage Microsoft 365. This is a FedRAMP moderate equivalent environment that allows you to store, process, and transmit controlled unclassified information. It's hosted up in GCC High, GCC High by Exostar. It's built on top of a Teams environment with an Exostar application embedded within it that puts in place 85 of those 110 controls that are managed while you're in the Enclave by Exostar and our team. If you're looking for some assistance in doing that, C that CMMC assessment or determine where you are in the process, or if you do um, need someone to come in and give you um, some, some, some help around it, 
Exostar has a number of partners out there. You can find these on our website under, C under the CMMC assessment tab. These partners are obviously versed, well-versed in the Exostar applications. They often utilize those to deliver their services. They help you manage, for example, a CMMC program utilizing certification assistant, and you can bring those partners into your certification assistant by inviting them into working with you within that system. So these can be individually used or they can be used as a suite. So I'm going to launch an exit poll before I jump into the questions that are that we received. So let me do that here real quick. Okay, so you should see the poll. I'd appreciate it if you did take a chance to fill this out. This lets us know how we did today. It also asks us or asks you if you'd like some additional topics covered. Remember, we do about we do three of these webinars every month, including some weekly sessions on the product itself. We do one on our policy pro. That's what we're doing today. We do one on certification assistant. We do a weekly session on our managed Microsoft 365. And then we also do a general CMMC topic webinar as well. So let me jump into the questions we received. So scoring this SP800-171, the total score is 250, yet the requirement is to meet 110, which appears to be only the basic security requirement. How does one calculate the score? So I'm not quite sure where the person got the 250 number um, because that's really not part of this. But the way to figure out how to score your NIST 800-171 um, compliance is to look at, look at NIST 800-171A. That's the assessment guide. What that'll show you and tell you is the point system. So as I mentioned, if you start with zero, for every control you've implemented, you get a one. So that's how you get to 110. However, if you haven't implemented a particular control, you have to take off five, three, or one point, depending on which control. And the, and, and the NIST 800 assessment guide tells you that. And so your score can range from a negative 203 to a 110. And once you go through that self-assessment and score it, that's the score you'll you'll enter into the, the SPRS system. Okay, number two, I'm new to the industry and CMMC NIST internet policies and would like to know how the company I work for can integrate our internal audit form into your program or service. Now, I'm not sure that, you know, a single internal audit form can can be like integrated into it. But you can certainly use that as a baseline if that includes pointers to, you know, what you do in these different areas. You know, for example, if your internal audit form includes your access controls and 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 shows you kind of how you've implemented those and what you've done to implement those. Those can that internal audit form can then be used as a guide to show you where to look or or on which um, particular control you've implemented. So, you know, when David mentioned, hey, you know, with Policy Pro, you can take what you've already done. So if you've got, you know, this internal audit form that also points you to, hey, yeah, we do do access control and this is how we do it. You can take this, you can take that, this is how we do it and and input that into policy pro and get how you're doing against that particular control you can get those those key indicators to see what you might need to add or or embellish around particular areas to give it more you know more definition um so you can certainly th th that is a valuable internal resource to uh, to show what you've done for a particular control uh, everyone's favorite question, have the dates for the rollout been pushed out? No, they really haven't been. Um, you know, since NIST 800-171 hit the, or I'm sorry, since CMMC2 was published in the Federal Registry last December, it's really been chugging right along to 
the schedule that was, you know, kind of um, intimated intimated at that time. You know, when it when it came out, it was expected to be about 12 to 14 months to implementation. We fully expect it to be sometime in the first quarter of 2025. Um, and it's hit all of its milestones since then, right? Public comment period is cut off after 60 days. Um, the, the, the CFR um, 32 and 48 have kind of hit their milestones to, to, get, um, to, to get into the review process, et cetera. So it's, it's not going to be pushed out, and every indication is that it, it will be implemented in early 2025. I think I already answered number four in the last commercial I just did, right? That's kind of what I tried to do in the, the CMMC Ready Suite and tell those different things about that. So as I mentioned before, we offer a number of different webinars and educational opportunities every month. We do a policy pro, what you're seeing here once a month. We do a certification assistant workshop um, once a month. We do a managed Microsoft 365 session actually every Thursday for um, a half hour at 2, at 2 p.m. Eastern. You can sign up for that on our website. That's a, just a short demonstration of managed Microsoft 365. And then we do a general topic CMMC webinar as well. Those are rotating topics. We, we often bring a partner or, or another guest speaker in to talk about a particular topic. We've got some additional resources to help you out. And all, all of these different applications we have also offer free trials. So you know, if you're not sure if Policy Pro is for you, feel free to come to our website, sign up for a free trial, try it out, ask some of our folks about it, um, and see if it see if it'll fit your needs. All right, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope everyone has a great day, and I will hopefully be talking to you all soon. Take care.